Yo, what's good guys? We are back on MLB The Show. Today, I'm answering a question I get very often, which is, what is a good swing? How do you define a good swing? Why do you think Tatis' swing sucks? Um, something of that nature. I get it quite often. I've even gotten emails about it in the past. So today, I'm going to break that down for you. Um, but real quick, before we get in, the channel's growing so much since the last time I did this. I've been starting to get questions about it. Uh, I do do coaching. It is in the video description of all my videos. I uh, just haven't promoted it in a while. Uh, I think the last time was the hitting video that blew up. That's been two, almost probably three months ago at this point. Um, so it's worth promoing again. Can get you better at the game. It's a one-hour session. Um, you know, do with that what you will. Me, I'm not the competitive player I have been this year necessarily. Uh, I go 12-0-ish, and -ish, somewhere around that two World Series each season, and then I don't play past that. Um, I probably could get to a 1,000, probably not top 50 material at the moment, but I know what it takes to get there, so I can coach you. I can pick up on bad and good tendencies that you have and give you uh, advice on where you need to go from there. Anyway, enough self-promo. Let's get into swings, right? So um, I'll just let Acuna's swing play in the background real quick. Scan did a great video about a year or two ago, going over every swing in the game and how long they are. Uh, every swing in the game is the same length, same amount of time uh, from the time you hit the button to the time contact is made with the ball is the same amount of time. It is straight placebo, whether you think a player has a fast or a slow swing. Um, so video's over, right? Everybody has the same swing, doesn't matter. Um, no, not the case, not the case. A lot of of how we perceive good and bad swings is things that the uh, character, uh, the animated character on screen that's made to represent a big league player, um, what they're doing pre-pitch. You can see Acuna has one of my favorite ones. Uh, he has a very high, very early leg kick. You can see um, by the time the pitcher is about to release the ball, his leg kick's coming to almost the end um, and when that foot is touching down, is letting you know, just like real life, to start your load and start to consider swinging at the pitch you're about to see. Um, so I like high early leg kicks. Uh, it can get to an extreme with like Justin Turner um, and somebody like Joey Votto. They kind of take it to an extreme. Um, but somebody like Acuna is phenomenal. And he's very short, very through the baseball. Helps kind of add to that placebo. Um, of a fast swing, right? So, uh, really like Acuna's swing. I think it's awesome. Has that high early leg kick. He does some interesting stuff with the hands, too, that I will get into with a later example. Um, but usually, if you're looking at the hands with a batter, uh, you kind of already lost. That's why I'm very iffy on Simeon. His leg kick, not necessarily the greatest, but his hands kind of tell the truth. If you can somehow look at their hands and still be a great hitter, um, it'll help you time it up. Anyway, um, this is kind of the timing method I use to hit online. When I'm really in a struggle, you're not just walking up to the plate and hitting the button when you think you need to be swinging, right? So, unfortunately, if you start to look at some of your favorite players like Mike Piazza or Tatis, somebody like that, it might ruin your perception of them having a good swing if you start to look at swings in this light. Um, basically, any movement that you see your batter do, you want it to be before the pitch is about to come in. That's why somebody like Corbin Carroll is so bad. Bro does not move until the ball is already in the catcher's mitt. Uh, if you like a completely stationary Mickey Mantle type of swing, then cool, he works for you. But uh, for most people, he doesn't. So George Brett, um, very short and through the ball like Acuna. I don't believe the leg kick is necessarily there. You can see it's a very up and down leg kick. Um, a lot of people like this style also. It's very quick. It's still way before the ball gets there, so it gives you your timing still if you use it. And you can see right there, I'm even too early uh, because I didn't pause after the leg kick. It's decent. I know a lot of people like Brett. I think he has more of like a feel thing, like perfect perfects with him just feel awesome. Uh, and he has a very smooth looking swing, so I think it contributes to that feeling that he has a great swing. Um, but overall, it's not necessarily one of my favorites. Here we go. This is hands. Uh, there's only a couple batters in the game where you should really be looking at their hands to tell you their timing. Uh, and I think that's Jimmy Fox. 
Lou Gehrig, and Babe Ruth. That's why a lot of competitive guys really like Lou Gehrig every year, really like Babe Ruth every year. You're just looking at the hands, and it tells you exactly when you need to be swinging for the most part. I'll sit here with Jimmy Fox and crank perfects all day. His, his hands tell, you know, everything. Eh, more or less. Um, obviously, you know, you got to kind of figure it out uh, for yourself. But that's all you're doing. Uh, you're seeing the hands cock back. You're seeing that very distinctive load. And you're just following through on the ball. You can see, uh, not the best timing. I'm not extremely locked in at the moment. I'm just trying to showcase some swings for you guys. Um, but very easy. You can sit here all day with a swing like this. Um, and the more you use them, the more used to it you get. You can notice very minute differences in the hands when they load. Uh, I don't really like Bay Ruth as much this year as I have in years past, but absolutely love Jimmy Fox. I would like Lou Gehrig if he ever got a card anywhere close to the one at the start of the year. Uh, Harper's a very, you know, famous. A lot of people love his swing. It's a very aggressive left-handed swing. Uh, he's kind of got a pretty decent leg kick. It's not huge. You can see it's barely even noticeable on regular strike zone. But it is early enough to where it lets you get to that. It lets you be ready for the pitch coming in. You can see absolutely cranked that one also. Um, he's got an awesome swing. Everybody knows that. Same for Yelich. Yelich has a very Harper-esque kind of swing. Very aggressive left-handed swing. Uh, now we get to another swing type. The toe tap. Most people will be familiar with this on either like David Wright or Jeter or somebody like Troy Glouse. Um, but I like chippers. I like chippers. He's a switch hitter, so he's always got that hand in this advantage. Don't have to worry about getting jammed as much. Um, but you can see he toe taps, right? Two or three times he toe taps. Um, and, you know, after that second one, you kind of got to be locked in. You got to be ready um, and know that it's getting to be your time where you need to be thinking of swinging. So he has a very distinctive one that I like a lot. Moving on, that's probably the best swing in the game, uh, so I'll save that for a minute. Uh, somebody that has grown on me massively recently is Nolan Jones. You can see, looks a lot like a you know a certain lefty that we just used. Very Joey Gallo esque, very Harper esque type of swing. You have to forgive the timing. Um, number one, this pitcher is a little all over the place for the supposed leaping, uh, you know, directly right down the middle. Um, also, Nolan Jones has an awful vision, so, you know, smaller timing windows in general. Uh, but I'm a pretty big fan of his swing. It's very Harper-esque. Obviously, that wasn't the best display. Um, catchers. There's two right-handed catchers that basically have Mike Trout-esque type of swings. Uh, big fan of Will Smith here. Very Trout-esque. Big, big early leg kick. Uh, very distinctive hand load. Very easy. Uh, used him in the, uh, what was it? Ah, uh, I forget the event. Uh, the Corbin Carroll, like, basically playoffs event, right? You could only use playoff cards from certain teams. Uh, I used Will Smith. He batted, like, 550. Um, and honestly, he did not have the most favorable results on a lot of his swings because his power isn't that great. Um, but that swing is just, it plays. It's so good. Um, obviously not really showcasing it too great very early in the morning at the moment. So not really too woke up. Uh, Ozzy just got a card. Never really been a huge Ozzy fan myself. Um, a lot of people really do like this. He is like those Justin Turner, um, Joey Votto type of guys where his leg kick is so early. It's so high, very distinctive. Um, plus he has like a midget strike zone. A lot of people like when they have strike zones like Joe Morgan or uh, Jose Ramirez. Uh, a lot of people like those smaller strike zones. So uh, a lot of people like Ozzy. Never been the biggest fan. Real Muto. This is the other catcher. Uh, basically a copy and paste of Will Smith's swing. You can see he's a little more out of frame. Um, very early, very large leg kick. Basically the same as Will Smith. Basically the same as Mike Trout. Um, just very, very minute differences in their swings. He's great to time up. Um, and then we'll get to the Mac Daddy. Uh, probably the best swing in the game. Every single year you can see Trout. He's got his little tempo where he goes up on his tiptoes. Um, and I could just sit up here and hit with this swing all day. It's the best swing in the game. Um, 
the milestone card, it's a little bit different swing wise. I'm pretty sure. Um, it's got like, I don't know, like rookie trout swing or something. Um, but it's still awesome. It's still trout swing. It's just a little different. It takes a little getting used to, uh, but trout, my vote for definitely the best swing in the game every single year. Um, I tried to include some other guys, but I guess they sent them to AAA because I didn't have enough people on uh, the roster. So we'll switch over to the Bad Swings team. Uh, there's a couple people on that team I would have liked to have showcased. Um, like Lindor, right? A lot of people love Lindor's swing. Um, I had Trey Turner there. He has a very Trout-esque swing. Um, it's even more... You know, it's even more exaggerated than Trout. It's very early. It's a very high leg kick. He is one of the hardest batters um, in the game to just jam. Just if you're trying to run a fastball inside on him, um, it's pretty rough. He has such an early leg kick. Um, and there's a couple other guys on that team, but I'm not going to get too in-depth on it. So this is my bad swing team. These are guys I would stay away from just because their swing sucks. And we're going to start with Ricky Henderson, a card that I don't think will ever be good in MLB The Show just because of his swing. Um, very hunched over, has an awesome bat flip. Uh, if it was a bat flips video, he would be, you know, top of the top. Uh, but his swing just sucks. Obviously, uh, righty lefty is going to be his best situation. Uh, it's just very easy to get jammed on. You can see his leg kick starts late. By the time his foot's about to hit the ground is when you're supposed to be swinging. The ball's already going to be by you. If you're swinging when his leg comes down, you're going to be late on the ball. Um, so that is a characteristic of a bad swing. You can see we didn't manage a perfect there, but that would not be my, uh, my measuring stick. Here's a controversial one. I know a lot of people are going to hate this one, and I hate it too. But Cattell Marte... I'll be honest, not the most awesome switch hitting swing in the world. Uh, I don't think it's the worst, but I don't think it's one of the best. I cannot tell you. His leg kick just starts a little bit too late, and it's probably not enough for a lot of people to notice. And this is coming from a guy that hit 480 uh, with the one at the start of the year and hit really good with the all-star one and really liked the milestone one in the event. I still think it's a good swing, but in terms of a switch hitting swing, it's not awesome. If you face a pitcher, I noticed it so much with John, uh, John Donaldson, and Randy Johnson, and if you ever probably saw that DeGrom, um, if you get a pitcher that throws fast sliders, it is incredibly easy to get jammed inside with him. His leg kick just starts a little bit late um, for my, you know, liking it's all right, and the fact he's a switch hitter saves it, right? But objectively, it's not the best swing in the world. It's the fact that he is a switch hitter um, that saves a lot of it. Here we go, Frank Thomas. Um, so Frank has a high leg kick, but it's a late leg kick. Um, he's somebody you've always, when he steps up to the plate, you always have to be looking for the inside pitch. He's never going to just turn on a pitch for you. Uh, you he's somebody you have to bat inside out with. You have to completely protect that inside of the plate and work your way out after you've already ruled out that they're not just going to throw you a fastball inside. Um, some people really like Frank Swing, and I don't hate it, but for most people, um, it's not the most accessible swing in the world. You can see right there we get jammed. Um, it's just his leg kick timing's a little bit weird. Um, and it's it's easy to get ate up inside with Frank every single year. It's no different this year. Another maybe controversial one that I think a lot of people have kind of had their numbers inflated because he had awesome stats when he came out, and he was a switch hitter. Mickey does nothing at the plate. He is a straight-up statue. Um, and, you know, I hit decent with the, the chase card one. I think I hit between 340 and 380 with him. Uh, I don't think he hit like 400 or anything for me. Uh, but you can see he just sits up there and does nothing. He sits up there. He loads his shoulders a little bit. That's it. That's all he does up at the plate. It is very hard if you are somebody that uses uh, body language to time up your swings. Um, you know, how to go about using Mickey. You can see now I'm on the early train. Went from being late on everything to early. He just doesn't do anything. He just stands there. 
And, you know, you're supposed to swing when you think is the right time to swing. So if you are a you, if that's our, if that's how you already hit, um, then cool. You probably didn't have a problem with Mickey. But if you are somebody that uses body language to hit, um, you know, Mickey's kind of rough. And now you see with Piazza again, instantly you can kind of identify what's wrong with it. It's a late leg kick. By the time you're supposed to be swinging, the leg is still in the air. Um, and there's some really bad swings you'll see with, like, tops now cards when you're doing tops now moments. Um, and this is Piazza swing upgraded, right? This is him more towards that midline of that, like, Aaron Judge type area where some people will actually like the swing, but most people won't. Um, that's more so where Piazza was. It used to be a worse swing. Um, now it's not as bad, but you can see it's still kind of a late leg kick. Ortiz, um, you know, I haven't really loved this year. Obviously, this is going to be lefty-lefty, so take it with a grain of salt. But if you look at his hands and his leg kick, you can see the leg kick's pretty late and the hands load kind of late. The hands are actually a better indicator, I find, on Ortiz uh, on a window swing than his leg kick. I feel like the leg kick just lies to you. Um, you're swinging, and the top leg is still in the air. Um, so in real life, that would make no sense, right? You'd have no power. But in the game, sometimes that type of stuff happens, especially depending on what pitch the pitcher's throwing and where they're throwing it. Just not really the best swing in the world for using body language at the time. Uh, just has a late leg kick. This McGuire, I mean, you can see. Yeah, he's got gross power, so the ball goes. Um, but you can see how late that leg kick is. Uh, just disgusting. Just disgusting. And this is somehow better than the rookie swing, believe it or not. So, um, not my favorite swing in the world. I used him at the very start of the year um, when I had Jeter before most people even had the game. Um, didn't really love him then. Definitely don't love him now. Here's another controversial one. I don't love Sammy Sosa. He has a toe-tap hunched over swing. Um, but I know a lot of people have, and a lot of people still like him. Um, I don't, I don't love it. I don't think it's bad enough to be on the worst swings video. Uh, I'm kind of shocked he made the team. I, I traded him over, but I threw a lot more people on the roster. Uh, I had like Tommy Pham on here. Tommy Pham would probably get my vote for the worst swing in the game, but he's such a low overall. I'm pretty sure they just optioned him to AAA, um, and he's not on this major league team with these swings. So that's Sammy Sosa. Here's everybody's favorite, Tatis. Another switch hitter that I don't think has objectively a great swing, Ellie. I don't think Ellie's swing is awesome. I think it's just the fact that he's a switch hitter and you always have the hand in this advantage works in his favor. Ellie has that kind of Cattell Marte quality where if you're facing a pitcher with a hard slider, he just gets ate up a lot. Um, something about the way his leg kick you know, how it's timed with when that hard slider comes in on that inside timing window, you get jammed a ton. So you can see Tatis, not the worst. I don't really know how to explain his swing necessarily. Um, you can see it is a very late leg kick. You can see his leg is like just coming out of nowhere and plopping down after the fact when you should have already swung. I was doing better when I was brain neutral and not really focused on anything. Um, really, with Tatis, all you can really say is it It feels like his hands are just slow through the zone. It feels like you're starting your swing so early, and it takes so long to get the bat around. Um, it's like he's swinging a 35-ounce bat. Um, it's just, it's rough. So, not a 40-ounce bat, even. Even more. Uh, Adley, I, I don't, he's on here just because he's on the Orioles. Uh, Corbin Carroll, this swing sucks. You can see... Uh, he has Mickey Mantle syndrome where he kind of just sits there and nothing happens until the ball's already in the mitt. You can see when he starts his leg kick, the ball's already halfway to the plate. If you're using body language to hit, you're not going to do well with Corbin. You see right there we're early, but it's kind of because I already know how bad the leg kick is. Um, so I'm kind of just, you know, preparing for it. I'm not reacting to the swing. I'm just preparing for how bad the leg kick is, and I'm swinging when, in my mind, the mind of a good player, uh, when I should be swinging. I'm not using the leg kick. 
Um, so I don't like his swing for that reason. It's super late into the delivery when it comes across. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the swings. I'll go back over the teams just in case you do want some names or if you do want to know who got left off the roster. Uh, we should be able to go to here. This is how you do um, roster control and custom rosters, if you were, were wondering. So we got Ricky Henderson, who I hate. Mickey Mantle, who I think is just kind of bailed because he's a switch hitter. Mark McGuire, who's terrible. David Ortiz, who has a late leg kick that really hurts you lefty-lefty. Um, Mike Piazza, you know, notoriously bad swing. Obviously, that was lefty-righty on All-Star. He's going to do fine there. Uh, but you get on those higher difficulties or you start playing people that have outlier sinkers, it's going to get real different. Sammy Sosa is a little controversial. Some people love him. I personally do not, um, but that's kind of how that is. Frank Thomas. Uh, always hard to protect the inside with Frank. Something about his swing and the fact they always make him a push hitter. Uh, he just kind of struggles to hit inside pitches. You, you have to be so aware of the inside pitch that it hurts everything else. Um, Corbin Carroll just does nothing at the plate. Uh, Tatis, super late leg kick. You can see, you know, kind of the common uh, denominator here, right, is the late leg kicks. Marte. Awesome player, and I hit really good with him, but I know this you get jammed a lot because the leg kick is late. Um, let's see, who was a low enough overall to where they didn't make it? I don't see anybody on this team, but I'm sure on the Red Sox I had one or two people. You see Lindor was not on there uh, for one reason or the other. I think he has an awesome switch hitting swing. Still has, honestly, a little bit of a late leg kick. I find myself getting jammed with him a lot. I think he's kind of got more of an overblown swing. I don't think there's too many switch hitters that legitimately have amazing swings. Like, there's no switch hitter that has Mike Trout swing type swing. Um, I think they're all just kind of mid swings, and the fact that they're switch hitters uh, leads people to believe that they're awesome swings. Uh, you can see Will Smith, Charlie Blackman. I threw on here. I thought he was worth a mention. If you do like those slap style swings, uh, I think Chuck Nasty and um, Mondesi always has a good one. And I thought there was somebody else, but maybe not. Um, and that's pretty much that for the best swings. I can go through, you know, uh, kind of my inventory for the year and see who I think has, like, an absolutely awesome swing. Um, nobody really here. Arenado is always a divisive one. Uh, a lot of people like those type of swings. I think Luis Gonzalez has a nice swing for what it's worth. Uh, Delgado is very hit or miss. Obviously, I only have CPU stats. I never actually broke him out on the line. Um, but he has, I think, righty-lefty, it's an awesome swing. Lefty-lefty, it's rough. Um, not going to lie. This Trout, right? Only batting 426 for me, but that's only in ranked. He's not been eligible for any events at all. Um, 426 with 17 home runs. Good numbers, not awesome numbers. Um, you know, a lot of that was during a big slump period for me. Cedric Mullins, a lot of people always love his swing. That's a good swing. Luis Robert could have made the worst swings video. His swing is horrendous. It sucks. Uh, Yelich, obviously a good swing. Pollock's very hit or miss most of the time. Uh, Bellinger, I thought of including in the good swings category. Um, but his is so similar to Bryce Harper's that it felt like it would just kind of been a waste of a slot. Um, but this, this Bellinger... Over 100 online games, batted 5'11 with 38 home runs for me. Um, obviously, just raked against righties and hit, you know, slightly below average for me personally against lefties. Uh, but an awesome card with an awesome swing. This trout, right? Probably my most games played of the year. 180 games played, batted 452 with 78 home runs. Um, so that is my personal favorite swing of any card on the year. I think I like it a little more than the milestone swing, um, but it is still good. This Lindor, right? I was bashing his swing. Uh, in 52 games, he batted 512 and hit 24 home runs for me. So that's an awesome swing. This Marte, you thought I was capping. Um, 108 games, batted 482 with 28 home runs. And I'm telling you, 
it's not the most awesome bulletproof swing in the game. Not a huge fan. Um, I think if a lot of these switch hitters had legitimately great swings, like give me a switch hitter with Trey Turner swing, it'd be over. It would be over. Um, only bad 406 with this one. He could not hit a home run to save his life. Uh, but I do recognize that a lot of people hit a lot better than me with that Trey Turner. Uh, this Rumito, I sold him. But you can see in 37 games, 556 with 11 home runs. Awesome swing. Uh, story, I have not used this year. I bought this card just because I know he has one of my favorite swings every year. Uh, I really like his swing. This will probably be his best card of the year, though. Jeter, right? I thought of throwing Jeter on the worst swings. I do not like those closed stance toe tap swings, but he batted 428 with 14 home runs for him. Very good card, um, and I think the stats kind of carried him. Um, I don't think he has an awesome swing. I don't really see it with him. Jimmy Fox so far, batting 400 with four home runs. Like his swing a lot. Uh, Kyle Tucker, always a good card. I never used this one, but always a good card. Uh, Babe has one of those hand-loaded swings. You can see he played 83 games for me, 401 with 31 home runs. Uh, probably had one of the lowest AB per home run ratios on my team. Chipper, the GOAT, um, 126 games, 425 with 57 home runs. He was batting a lot higher than that before I started slumping. Um, Lou Gehrig, right? Barely used his card online, but when I did, he batted 440 with 14 home runs. And yes, right, you can look at this one of two ways. I am a very good player at the game, um, and I can probably hit decently well with a lot of people with not great swings. But I'm trying to showcase my favorite swings for the year. Juan Soto, thought of putting him on the good swings. 529 with six home runs. Uh, Matt Carpenter, all right, I'm not going to make this a 40-minute video, right? I'm not going to go through every card of the year. Um, but there's a lot of cards with a lot of good swings, and I've had people ask me to do Corey Seager. Um, I've asked people, you know, or I've had people ask me, let's spit it out, uh, to give them all the best swings in the game. I can't do that. It, it takes way too long. You got to go try some of these cards for yourself, or you got to just take me at my word when I'm doing a tier list and say somebody has a good swing. I'm not going to say they have a good swing if they don't. Um, anyway, that is what, in my opinion, makes a good swing and a bad swing. Most of it comes down to the leg kick. If you don't use the leg kick method to hit, um, if you just kind of hit the button randomly when the ball's coming in, when you think you need to be swinging, um, that makes a lot of sense that a lot of people don't mind Tatis and, um, you know, some of these other cards that have horrendous swings. But uh, most high-level players at least use the leg kick to kind of get them into that timing window. And so that really influences our opinion um, on why a card has a good or a bad swing. Um, anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Till next time, if you did enjoy the content, feel free to like and subscribe if you have uh, enjoyed the content, if it has been helpful at all. Till next time, peace.